Welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet Channel. Today we're going to do some baby back ribs. Y'all stay tuned. on barbecue I, I used to do a lot of barbecue videos and we're gonna do one today also uh, very few of them show you doing baby back ribs and uh, so we're gonna do something today two ways but we got a uh, plain baby back ribs and we are going to do some in the Dutch oven or to roast some in a Dutch oven and we're gonna do some on one of our pieces of barbecue equipment I haven't quite made up my mind which yet but for right now, I'm going to show you how to prep the ribs. So here in the pan, i got a half a rack. That's going to go in our 12-inch Dutch oven. And a full rack right here. It's going to go on one of our smokers. And all we're going to do, is we took the membrane off the back, both sides of these, okay? The membrane off the back, and we're going to liberally, they're still moist. So no need to add mustard or any of that mess. This is our homemade and competition backwards gourmet rub has a lot of good things in it. I will try to leave you a link or an end screen there so that you can go, I believe we have this up on our uh, on our channel, then you can go make some of that for yourself. But we're just gonna give that, both of those racks, all of this that will actually stick on them. And we'll let them hang out for a little while. While we're getting everything else ready. So completely coated with rub. Use your favorite or you can learn how to make ours. Alright, so we got our Weber kettle grill is what we decided to use because we just checked the weather. There's a good chance of rain this afternoon. This is going to be the easiest thing I'm going to be able to get in out of the rain. So we just got some paper. I had some packing paper from stuff that came from the Amazon store. If y'all hadn't had a chance to uh, check that out yet, I'll leave the link down there for you guys to go check out our new Amazon store and all the items on there, stuff that we use here or are planning to use. So uh, check it out. If you buy something there from uh, from our store, you know we get a, I guess, a few pennies off of that. We'll have to see how that goes. So we're getting our chimney charcoal uh, starter ready to go, and we'll have some of these for the camp grill or for the the uh, Dutch oven and some here for the grill. So I want to make a foil insert for the bottom of the Dutch oven. So I'm just going to lay the lid up on there and we'll just bend uh, our aluminum foil right up around it just like that. And then we can, uh, you know, we can kind of trim off the excess if you want. Like these, these ears right here. It's going to give us kind of a good guide. And that will fit right in our, uh, our big 12 inch back there very nicely. So it's already kind of preformed. It's going to be a little smaller in the bottom. But not. So we just used aluminum foil, shiny side up. Remember, shiny side toward what you're cooking. It's going to give us a nice reflective surface in there, I hope. And, uh, you know, eventually we're going to put in our, uh, our rack. Um, I'll try to find out if uh, Amazon has these racks available from Lodge. Uh, and get them up on the store for you. So what we're burning today is a relatively new product from uh, Kingsford. It's their new long burning charcoal briquettes. <clears throat> They're, uh, they light up pretty nice. They've got a nice chimney full of them going right there. So we figured we'd give it a try. You know, our favorite's been Stubbs for all this, all these years we've been uh, doing this. So we'll see how this uh, works out. And we'll let He's you know. On the, on the kettle grill. We're going to go ahead and put about uh, maybe f six or seven coals on each side. Right on our piles of uh, unlit coals. And we'll make sure they get uh, nestled up there into their little areas. And those will start to light our uh, unlit charcoal. And get our wood going. Go ahead and put our grill on here. This is the Weber Gold, so it does come with the grill with the flaps so you can get your wood and your charcoal 
We may need that. So we're gonna go ahead and get the grill on. Give it a quick uh, brush down. This is one thing that you can't beat on a Weber grill. It, these grills tops last forever. I use this one practically every day and I can still see the chrome. So we'll go ahead and get the lid on that and we're looking for 275 on this guy. We got it barely cracked at the bottom. We may have to adjust a little bit. So placement of where you put your uh, your vent is important. Usually we're off to one side or the other, but here since we got fire on both sides, we want it right in the middle. Dutch oven I'm gonna put right on top of that nice little stack what I'll do next is I got some pecan chips here pecan whatever you want to call it um, we're gonna press those right down tight to the bottom and hopefully we'll get enough heat on that to actually get a little bit of smoke off of those for our ribs and then we're gonna go ahead and put in our uh, little rack. I did find uh, these on uh, Amazon for you. So they're up on the store. Uh, Lodge makes now a, uh, a cast iron one. It doesn't raise up quite as high as this one, but uh, there's another one there, or a couple, they're only like five or six bucks. So y'all go check that out on the Amazon store. Okay, so that, that uh, Weber kettle's come up pretty quickly. It's up about 250 already. Now I like to put my ribs on by hand instead of using tongs on them because tongs will always mess with your uh, with your seasoning and you'll get a mark in the seasoning and it won't be as pretty. So right down the center, and we're going to go ahead and put our lid back on and keep an eye on the tent. Let's open it up and uh, we've got it preheated now. You know it's not smoking, but I can definitely smell the pecan wood. Wonderful nutty flavor. So let's go ahead and put our ribs on it. Just gonna lay them right in the center, right on that rack. We'll go ahead and get the lid on and we'll stack it up on the top. I gotta wash my hands first. And got a little sizzle already. The wood really smells good. done here to keep this fire going because it's going to be a pretty long cook time in here and you can do this on anything it's going to take a long time to cook once your first ring of coals are started to get about halfway down I just took about half as many uh, unlit ones and just leaned them up on them all the way around the thing so now as those other ones die out they're lighting the new ones and hopefully we can just keep that cycle going there are some wonderful smells coming out of this Weber kettle right now. Uh, so we're going to go and just take a quick peeky and see what they look like. Oh yeah. Starting to get a little bit of rendering action on there. So, and our, uh, looks like our fire's going okay. Maybe a little hotter over there than it is over here. So, it's going though. And that apple wood on that side is doing alright. So every time we do this, we check on it. Now we're going to move the uh, vent onto this side, and each time we'll rotate it back, just to make sure uh, it keeps cooking evenly. Since we got one long strip of meat right across the middle. All right, guys, we're going to go take a look at those baby backs on the smoker. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So what we're going to do is just to kind of probe down between the bones and feel how tender they are. This end, very tender, very tender. 
So we're going to stop them about right here, take them off of there, and put them on a pan, let them rest a little bit. And right before we get ready to serve them, we will uh, do a little glaze. You know, when you're outdoor cooking, you're always going to have to deal with the weather. And it's just now starting to sprinkle rain, so we just barely made it on this one. Mm -mm -mm. So on our Dutch oven version, it's been about 2 hours and 15 minutes. We'll go and take a look at that. And it smells awesome. That is beautifully tender. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy off too. sets of our ribs here what we're gonna do we're gonna put them bone side up first I do them one at a time um, I have my sauce here and I'll give you guys a recipe for this uh, down in the description box it's basically a mixture of barbecue sauce apple cider vinegar and frog jam which if anybody's thinking that's something that jumps around on a lily pad uh, you would be wrong. Frog stands for fig, raspberry, orange, and ginger. It is a beautiful combination. Um, it's very delicious. I'm sure uh, we can probably find it, put it up on the store for you. What I'm using here, I got up in South Georgia on my last uh, hunting trip from one of those. Uh, very nice little general stores they have on the side of the road. So we'll go ahead and do our big one. This is the one off the smoker. You know, it's a little bit darker from the smoke. So it's important to get this on there while they're still hot, because most of that will set from just the just the heat of uh, the still in there while it's just sitting here on the pan. And like I said, right before we serve them, we will throw them, oh, see I'm making a big mistake there, trying to handle them with tongs. Should be handling them with my hands. I'm knocking the bark off of it. So frog jam, glaze, baby back ribs. Looks awesome. So the ribs are ready. This one over here is the one we did on the Weber kettle grill. And this is the one we did in the Dutch oven. So we're just going to find a bone there. Slice right down between them. That is super tender. Okay. That's a Dutch oven. And this one here, we did this one in the Weber kettle on a more traditional a smoking deal. You see it's got a little bit more. You can see a little bit of the smoke, the pinkness in there. So next thing we're going to do is just test, is taste test them and see which ones are, um, are better. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and try. This is the one Dutch oven. Mm. It's 
done perfectly. Bite off the bone. Uh, perfectly tender. That's as good as any um, restaurant you're going to get right there in the Dutch oven. Uh, here's the one done on the Weber kettle grill with the apple wood. About the same cook time. Uh, about 30 minutes more on these than the uh, ones in the Dutch oven. Let's give it out a try. Same thing, you know, bite off the bone, not falling off the bone. But where you bite it and it just comes clean right off the bone there. And that's what we're looking for. Yeah, I, I, I could taste a little bit more smoke on that one. But they're both equally delicious. Equally delicious. Uh, which is really surprising to me. I thought the ones done on the uh, charcoal would be way better than the ones done on the Dutch oven. But that's not really the case. Um, you know, the, the flavor from the rub and the, and the sauce comes through. And, hey, you know, I'm going to say it's pretty much a tie. Well, I'm really surprised that there wasn't a huge difference between, you know, my traditional type of uh, Weber kettle smoke uh, ribs. And, you know, if we'd have done them over there in the big smoker or up in the big upright, and we'd have done them for hours and hours, it might have been a more difference. These baby back ribs don't take that long to cook. So, um, the, the and another great thing I, I'm really surprised about is... The ones we did in the Dutch oven with those pecan chips down there on top of that tinfoil, they're just almost exa exactly the same amount of smokiness on those as the one where we're actually burning charcoal and applewood. watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button right there. For a playlist of Weber Kettle Grill dishes, check it out right up here. And for our playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, check it out right up here. We'll see you next time.